Now, the billionaire famous investor known for zigging with all others zag. What does he make of this? The Fish Investor uh, Investments founder and chairman, kind enough to join us. Ken, good to have you. The, 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 the expectation is we're going to certainly see rates rise tomorrow. But do you see three quarters of a point? I don't have a clue. You know, I've never uh, believed there was much actual IQ at the Fed anyway. So, you know, what's the diff? Uh, they'll do what they'll do. And I actually think that because, the, th as I've said to you before on your show, the three-month, 10-year spread has been widened all year long, that uh, this, whether they go half a point or three quarters, it's already basically priced and isn't going to make that much difference. Now, markets tend to respond to a big move, and it, whether it's justified or not. I just wonder whether a three-quarter point hike uh, and maybe similar hikes to follow gets people thinking about the Paul Volcker years in the late 70s, early 80s, when, when he would do that routinely up to a full percentage point or more, and that would scare them. Do you think that would scare them? I do think if they, kept, if they keep going and keep going big, uh, if... You know, the phrase is kneecapping, right? I mean, right. If, if the notion is that to make everybody feel better, you got to kneecap them and put them on the ground so they can rest, uh, that'll scare them. People don't like to get kneecapped, I don't think. Yeah, I'm the, the, as an Italian-American who's dealt with that issue in the past year, I, I worry about that. But it, it, all kidding aside, again, I'm wondering how you look at the markets these days. They fell more after falling yesterday. You always hear this talk of capitulation where investors essentially say, the hell with it, I'm out. Are we at the hell with it, I'm out stage? So clearly we are not. But, I mean, clearly, you know, when I look at my 115,000 clients across the world, we are not. But sometimes we don't have capitulation with a bottom. And I'm increasingly coming to the view that this is a period that will not have capitulation, partly because everybody's looking for it, but partly because I think this is what I call a Ghostbusters market, in that you can't go anywhere. If you think about it, long bonds are negative in this period. Inflation's up. You're going to go to cash. You're going to go to bonds. Gold hasn't had any glitter. You really don't want to go into residential real estate because it's been so pricey. You can't go into foreign currencies because the dollar's been so strong all year long. Uh, who are you going to call? And, uh, <laughs> you know, you did Christmas. I'm doing Ghostbusters. Yeah, I, but, I noticed um, that. <laughs> I think yours, uh, your, your the, comparison the, is better. The, the fact is it's hard to go somewhere. Number two, uh, if you go back through all bear markets, and corrections that are big defined as longer than five months or down more than 15 percent, you can actually only find three times where you had the, the, the bear market and you had long bonds having significant negative returns. And all three of those, the 1968-70 downturn, uh, the first little correction uh, in 80 before later downturn, and uh, then the 90 bear market were all relatively mild in total return and had no capitulation. Hmm. Uh, I think that's where we're going, but I'm going to make a point that I don't think most people think about at this moment in time. And it's just, a, I think it's an interesting one that I do think people should just naturally think about, but I don't think they do. We crossed over 20%. We closed there official definition of a bear market. Now you say to yourself, once you've gotten down 20, how long is it when you look at historical bears going back through history before you've gotten to the bottom, including all of them, and then when you're back up to where you're above 20? And the answer, which is just simply averages, so it doesn't necessarily apply, but it's worth thinking about, is the median is less than a month. Really? So there isn't long to go with this. There isn't long to go with this. Any given one isn't necessarily the median. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but the median's less than a month, and then it's less than another month before you're back to where you're up above 20. In fact, it's only a third of a month from the trough until you're back up above. Now, that's a median. On average, it's a little longer right. uh, on mean average. But, but it's not a year's of event. In your eyes, it's not looking at the past. This idea that we go into a multi-year sort of a bear market, Vonka Kin to the 70s, you don't see that? 
Well, kneecapping, we certainly could. Yeah. Kneecapping and five more terrible things that happened, we could, but I'm just going to say PMIs are okay, like I told you the last time I was on, and they've continued to be. Leading indexes are all right. You're talking about uh, purchasing managers and what they've been up to, and that's been pretty robust. And in services. Right. And uh, generally, there's lots of people looking for the downside. Inflation is annoying to be sure, but the economy in the most vulnerable place in my mind when people say, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, energy, energy is going to capsize things is Western Europe. And Western Europe's economy is growing moderately. The U.S., I expect to have moderate growth. Can I be wrong? Of course I can. But the fact of the matter is, I'll think yeah. this is what people think it is, which is the terrible recession with the kneecapping. And I think and I hope that after the Fed does whatever they do tomorrow, they just take a couple of breaths and wait a while and let's see what happens before they do anything that might be too extreme. Because I don't believe we need to create a recession so if, you, if we don't create a recession, I mean, we remember that we're having some audio difficulty with you, and so that's why I jumped on you there. But I, when, we, when we talk about the 70s experience, I, I, I always hasten to add to folks, I, I lived through that, as, as you did as well. I don't see all those similarities. The underlying economy right now is much stronger, job creation much more robust. Uh, anecdotally, we see packed theaters, uh, packed planes, uh, packed a lot of things. Now, that could could, you know, dial back as prices continue to move up. But I just don't see that, that, that comparison justified just yet. And importantly, a absolutely, Neil. And, and importantly, you're, you're, in my opinion, you're 100% correct, because when we think back on that period, it actually started, you know, from the 50s into the 60s with slowly building inflation that just did a little more and a little more and a little more and a little more and then continued into the 70s until you got into the very painful levels. This time, we had very, very low inflation until last year. And then we started going straight on up. And a lot of that, as I've said on the show for you before, a lot of that, not all, has been caused by supply chain problems, which will eventually unwind. Right. And this is very different than the 70s, but it's still possible that the you know Fed and other central banks do really stupid stuff. They're good at it. Uh, they've got experience <laughs> and training to do stupid stuff. Uh, but I think this is a market that's likely to not need capitulation to bottom because there's not a lot of easy places to go. The fact is, you go into bonds right now, what do people expect? Well, they expect if they go into bonds, they're going to lose money. Uh, go, go into cash. Who wants to go into cash with a high inflation rate that they fear? Uh, who wants to do any of these uh, crypto? You mean gypto? Uh, <laughs> I mean, where are you, you going to go? Yeah. And I, so, I therefore, I don't think you get the traditional forms of capitulation. And I know for a fact, having lived through some and studied some others, that you do sometimes get bottoms to bear markets that aren't too extreme, where you don't have capitulation in the ways that people think. I mean, they think capitulation is anarchy pitching of stocks in volume. Uh, the volume in this time period has actually been pretty light. All right. We'll watch it very, very closely. I think between my, my Twas the Night Before Christmas theme and, and your, you know, kneecapping theme, we, we've got something here. So I just wanted to leave viewers with that. Ken Fisher, very good catching Thank up you, with Neil. you. Uh, Ken Fisher, uh, billionaire investor.